Hello my dear friends, welcome back to my channel Pharmacovigilance Simplified. So before we start, please allow me to take this opportunity to thank you all for your love and support to this channel and based on some recent request I received, we are here with the topic for today which is causality in pharmacovigilance. So let's begin with understanding the term causality. Causality kya hai? is the relationship between a drug and an adverse reaction. And causality assessment is the evaluation of the likelihood that a medicine or a drug is the causative agent of an observed adverse reaction. So to simplify, let's take an example of drug X and an adverse reaction Y. So causality assessment may hum ye judge ya ye analyze karte hain ki kya adverse reaction Y drug X se hua ya nahi. Now what is the need or importance of causality assessment? अगर हम स्ट्रॉन्ग एविडेंस गैदर कर सकते हैं फॉर रिस्क एसोसिएटेड विद अ ड्रग दिस कैन इम्पैक्ट द ओवरऑल बेनिफिट रिस्क प्रोफाइल ऑफ अ ड्रग सिमिलरली एस्टेब्लिशिंग कॉजैलिटी फॉर रिपोर्टेड एडवर्स रिएक्शंस कैन हेल्प अस टू असेस द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ दीज एडवर्स रिएक्शंस एट द इंडिविजुअल लेवल एज वेल एज द ओवरऑल पब्लिक हेल्थ इम्पैक्ट एंड इवेंचुअली दिस विल रिजल्ट इन मिनिमाइजिंग हार्म टू द पेशेंट्स प्लीज नोट Causality assessment is a very critical aspect and is required in all routine pharmacovigilance activities, including ICSRs, signal management, as well as aggregate reports. Now we will talk about some criteria or some parameters which should be considered for causality assessment. First is temporal or time relationship between a drug and an event. So in terms of temporal association. If an ADR starts before the drug is administered, we can easily exclude the causality. Next is alternate etiology, that is, koi underlying disease ya koi concomitant medication, which can also explain the occurrence of the reported adverse reaction apart from the drug. These are also known as confounding factors. Then is D challenge, that is, response to drug withdrawal or dose reduction. अगर ड्रग विड्रॉ करने के बाद कोई इवेंट रिकवर हुआ तो इट्स अ पॉजिटिव डी चैलेंज और अगर नहीं रिकवर हुआ देन इट्स अ नेगेटिव डी चैलेंज नेक्स्ट वी हैव इज री चैलेंज दैट इज रिस्पॉन्स टू ड्रग री एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन अगर ड्रग री एडमिनिस्टर करने के बाद कोई एडवर्स रिएक्शन रिकर यानी दोबारा हुआ तो इट्स अ पॉजिटिव री चैलेंज और अगर दोबारा इवेंट नहीं हुआ इट्स अ नेगेटिव री चैलेंज एंड लास्ट इज प्लॉजिबिलिटी दैट इज Is the reaction already known with this drug or other drugs of the same class, or can the mechanism be explained based on the pharmacology of the drug? So, in a nutshell, for a strong or a definite causality, we need to have a temporal relationship. There should be no alternate etiology or confounding factors. We should be able to explain the occurrence of this reaction based on plausibility. And yes, having a positive D challenge and a positive R challenge. Will further strengthen the association between the drug and the event. Now, coming on to methods of causality assessment, one of the most widely used scales for causality assessment in pharmacovigilance is WHO UMC, that is World Health Organization Uppsala Monitoring Center scale. This is based on clinical judgment or global introspection. Another very commonly used method is based on algorithm. and is known as narenjo scale i'll be very soon coming up with separate videos on these two most commonly used methods of causality assessment thank you so much for staying connected till the end and watching this video